That's kind of cool. It's like a little Saikuno scarf. Hi, I'm Pablo. Uh, this over here is Jiro. And today we're going to do a tutorial for making a radial menu. Radial menus are used in a ton of games for like gear setups or, you know, activating abilities, all sorts of things. So I'll show you how to do one. So I want to start in a simple uh, 2D project. I have like a fancy background, but you don't need that. Then I have just a simple button here. And this is just a raw image, which right now has a question mark, which is what we're going to use to test our, our menu. So the first thing we're going to do is create how our menu items are going to look like. So I go here into the canvas and I do create empty. And I'm going to call this a radio menu entry. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a few things. And go to UI and I'm going to select a raw image. And this is going to be my backer. And for that, I have already a texture, but you know, you can use um, whatever texture you want. In this case, I'm just going to use like a little a circle with a faded black in the center. Then I'm going to duplicate this one. And this new one, I'm going to call icon. We can clear this. Let's just put, I'll just put like a little cat face for the moment, just so we have some reference. And I'm going to add a label to it uh, over here, UI text mesh pro. You can use the regular text if you prefer. Let's move it a, a little bit down. I want to change it to be centered and laid on. Let's create a, a little code for this. And this is going to be a new script and I want to call it radio menu entry. And that's it for now. We're actually not going to do anything immediately with this entry. Uh, all we're going to do is uh, create a prefile from it. So I recommend you go if you have a prefabs folder, which I definitely recommend, then inside of here, I'm going to say uh, radio menu. I'll create a little folder for it and drop in the prefab in there. Then I can delete it from my main timeline. So now we have a prefab for the menu entry. We need to make the actual menu. So go into canvas, right click, and then another one, another time, just create empty. And let's call this radio menu. Let's add a script to it. Uh, this time it's just going to be called radio menu. And now let's go do some codes. So basically what we're going to have is a radio menu class that will have a list of entries. So in our entry per se, all that we're going to have is an icon, a label and a callback. For now, we're just going to put the label just so that we can hook it up and start testing. And in our radial menu class proper, we'll have the list with all the entries. Then we'll have a, a little function to add each entry, which will basically just like instantiate a prefab that we created, the one we just created. And then from there, just get a pointer to the radial menu entry in that prefab, and then just add that to our entries. And that way we can kind of keep track of them. And then we'll have a public uh, function that is the one that we're going to call from our button to open the screen. And all that will do is add uh, right now just six entries, uh, sorry, five entries, and uh, give them uh, a sequential name. Now we have some code. We got to go back to Unity and hook up a few things. First, let's start in the prefabs radio menu, and let's select this one. So if we select our radio menu entry, you'll see we have an entry for label right here. So we can just grab our little text field and plug it in there. And then in our uh, radio menu proper, we'll have an entry for the prefab. So we just drop this one in there. And now we have to call the open function. So we go to our text button. Uh, this will depend a lot on what type of button you're using. This is just a, a type that I'm using right now, but you know, it's very similar in any of them. They'll have some event that you can call in here. So I'm just going to add that one and then I'm just going to drop this runtime menu in here and then say radio menu open. Let's run and test it. So once we run, you can see beautiful Coco over there, uh, accompanied by Kirby. And if we click on our button, it'll create the buttons. But they're all stacked up together, so you can see right now that the numbers are all right on top of each other. So let's spread them out. So basically, we're going to create a new function called rearrange that will you know, rearrange the entries and it will first calculate how much does it need to turn for each one of the entries. So for example, 
if we have six entries, we gotta divide a full circle, aka 360 degrees, by our six entries. So we'd end up with each one takes 60 degrees of separation. And in this case, since we're gonna use it for a sine and a cosine operators, we use radians instead of degrees, but it's basically the same thing. So math pi times two, which is basically a full circle divided by how many entries there are. And then uh, for each one of those, we calculate the X and the Y just by doing math sine and cosine for the, the angle that we calculated, which, you know, for the first entry, since this is, um, since this is zero, the first entry will multiply this and basically will be for zero. And then we multiply it for the radius, which we added above just as a serializable field so that you can change it to be whatever you please. And then we adjust the position of the object to be that. Now, since this is a UI element, we gotta use rec transform instead of just a regular transform. And we also use anchored position. So it's basically the position within the object so that if you move the parent, it moves along with it. Because otherwise this would be setting like a global position, which maybe you want in your case. But for this particular case, since I want to be able to uh, move the parent uh, radio menu and I want the children to come along with it, that's why I would want the anchored position. Now, when we click, you can see the, our five little entries spread out around button zero, button one, button two, button three, button four. Perfect. Now let's make it so it changes the icon. So the first thing is we're going to add uh, an entry for a raw image icon into the raw me menu entry so that we can basically alter which texture is showing. And then we're going to create um, a set function for it and a get function for it so that we can have access to that icon. And in the radio menu entry, similarly, we're going to need to add an icon to our entry. So for that, we're going to create a, a list of icons that we can serialize so that we can hook up any icons we want over there. And in the entry, basically, you just add to add entry, like a little parameter there for the texture. Then we pass it along to the radio menu entry. And in the open, I'm just basically passing in the icons from our list into the entries. Back in Unity, I select the radial menu and you can see now we have a list here for icons. And um, let's add, right now we only have uh, five entries, but I'm gonna add seven because I know I have more icons than, than we have entries at the moment. I have a few here, so I'm just gonna hook the ones I have, but you know, you'd, um, you'd use whatever icons you, you got handy or that, you know, correspond to either items or whatever you're using, you know, potions maybe, you know, things like that. Since we have eight entries now, I'm going to change this to eight just so that we can show all the icons. And the last thing we need to do is we need to go to our prefab. And now we have an entry here for the icon. So let's just drop our raw image icon in there so that we can actually change which icon it has. Now, when we try it, we have a whole bunch of entries and you can see each one has their own little icon. So now that we have them there, the next thing we gotta do is make them react to cursor input. So now back in our code, we're gonna use a Unity Engine Systems, and this will allow us basically to add some interfaces to radio menu entry that will make it so it receives input for anything to do with the pointer interacting with it. So we're gonna add interfaces for eye pointer click handler, eye pointer enter, enter handler, and eye pointer exit handler. If you want more, there's like three more, I think, and they're all eye pointers, so they're easy to find. Uh, then it'll ask you to implement some functions so that it matches with the interface. You can just uh, select it and then go Alt Enter, and that will basically auto create some stuff callbacks for it. Once we have those, we are just gonna delete the contents, which right now just throw and insert. And then we're gonna include dg.twinning. I have a tutorial on uh, interpolations. This is just so it's fancy and it has a little bit of animation instead of just snapping. You can just make it like, you know, react immediately, but it's nicer if it has an interpolation. I definitely recommend this one, which is uh, a library called Tutwin. There's a free version if you want. I'll link it down in the description. And then basically we're just gonna uh, do a do scale. So basically it will animate the scale and I'm just doing vector one times 1.5. So essentially it will make it 50% bigger when we hover. I put a little bit of easing in it. Easing is basically like when you're interpolating, it's is it, if it's linear, then basically it moves at a, at a continuous pace. But when you 
when you put an out quad, essentially it's doing the shape of a power of two, so that it starts fast and then ends slow, which I, I find for UI to be the best, so that it feels responsive, but there's still a little bit of juice with that animation. I also added a do complete. This is because since you can uh, enter and exit so fast, you want to do complete to clear out previous interpolations and then do the new one, which is that do scale. Otherwise, they just kind of accumulate as you enter and exit, so it's a nice way to clean it. And then in pointer exit, we do exactly the same, only we make it go back to like 100% scale. So you can see as they, as you hover them, they grow and become smaller once you leave. I'm gonna change this a little bit. I don't like everything growing. I think I only want the icon to grow. So that's a pretty easy change that we can do. Back in here where we are caching our component, we can, instead of going get component, we can just do icon dot get component. And that will do the animation on the rect for the icon only. It's also a good practice to, in your entry here, Right now, all of them are turned on for Raycast. You only want one of them. So in this case, let's do the backer. So the backer has Raycast targets. So I'm gonna leave that on and I'm actually gonna make the, the backer a little bigger just so that the icon doesn't feel as tight in there. So let's make that like 130 by 130. That kind of surrounds it a little nicer. Then the icon, we don't want that to be Raycast target because we don't want it to block the, the backer. And then for the text, similarly, you can go into extra settings. And over here, there's Raycast target. You can turn that off. Now, when we test, you see now only the icon is uh, growing, which I think looks much nicer. Looking over here, maybe we need to move the labels down a little bit because they're kind of overlapping. That's very easy to just basically go into this one, then just grab it and just move it a little bit down and happy times. So to add a little bit more juice, we go into radial menu. We also include um, the DG twinning like we did in the radial menu entry. And that way we can do a few interpolations in here. And it's gonna be very simple in the rearrange function, instead of setting the position to be instant, we're gonna make it so it animates there. And we also want a little bit of a stagger. So basically the first one will move first. The second one will move a little, a little later then the third one a little later. So it's kind of staggered and look a little nicer. Since we're gonna stagger it, then we don't want it to all look like stacked in the middle. We're gonna first scale them down so they're like invisible and then just kind of grow and move into their position. So for that, we basically cache the rec transform. Then we set the local scale to zero so they're basically invisible. And then uh, we call do scale, which will animate. Uh, so they animate to the scale of one over 0.3 seconds. We again use the set ease just like we did in the other one. Again, it's so that there's a little bit of curve to the motion. And then we add the delay and this will what will stagger things. And as you can see, I'm doing 0 0.05 delay times I. So the first entry will not be delayed at all because I is zero. The second one will be delayed by 0 0.05, the third one by 0.1, the fourth one by 0.15, so on and so forth. And then I do the exact same thing for the position. So now when we open this, you can see it animates in, which looks pretty cool. So far, whenever we click this, we just keep on adding entries. So if I click again, and now we have more entries. Click again, even more entries. As you can see, the animation looks pretty cool. Although obviously we, <laughs> this is not what we want. We actually want them to disappear when we press it again. So let's do that now. So to make it so it closes when we click a second time, we're gonna copy paste the open method and we're just gonna change it into closing. And then inside of it, we're gonna make a little interpolation so that they collapse towards the center over 0.3 seconds. And then uh, once that completes, we call a delegate. A delegate is basically a function that can take care of something for you. So you can have a, a variable that's a delegate type, and then you can assign a function to it and you can call it whenever you want. So they're very good for things like in this case, like a callback for when the action is complete. So on complete, you will call this delegate which will destroy the entry that we cached above. And we create a very simple function called toggle that says, okay, if there's no, if there's no entries, then we open. If there are entries, we close. And obviously because of that, on the close, we need to clear entries once our loop is done. Back in Unity, we go to our button and right now it's uh, hooked up to open. So let's change real menu and hook it up to toggle. And then when we click, it opens. When we click again, it collapses. So, good times. 
So now that we have all that, uh, what we actually have to do is now make it so when we click this, something happens. And that something is basically whenever I click on one of these, I want the icon to be replaced in the middle. So pretty straightforward. So in radial menu entry, we're going to declare a type of delegate. In this case, it's a custom type that we're creating that's called a radial menu entry delegate. So basically, it'll be a function that we can call that will always take a radial menu entry as a parameter. So that's going to be the type of delegate that we're uh, declaring. And below, we're going to say radial menu entry delegate callback. And that is going to be where we can hook up the function that will get called when we click. And below, we put the, the just a set function to, so that we can uh, assign that variable. And then in on pointer click, we say, okay, when you get clicked, if you have a callback, and that's what that question mark is doing, it's saying, if we do have a callback, then call it and also pass yourself as a parameter. Since we are already on menu entry, uh, basically that will work just fine. And from the side of the menu, we basically are going to include the usage of uh, uniengine.ui just so that we can actually affect the, the icon. We're going to serialize a field and that's going to be the target icon. So basically where we have that little question mark, that's what we're going to put in there. And then below, we're going to make set target icon function that is going to be the one we call. And it's going to take as a parameter a radial menu entry. And then it's going to just say target icon dot texture and then get the, the icon from the entry that got past 10. Then into our add entry, we're going to add a third parameter and that's going to be radial menu entry dot radial menu entry delegate. And then we just pass in RME dot set callback and we passed it in there. And from the open, we got to also point to set target icon. So set target icon will become the callback and that will get set into the menu entry. And when you click it, it'll get called. So right here in our radial menu, we'll see we have an empty target icon, which is that question mark. So we can just drag it in here. And now when we select things, we change the icon in there pretty easily. Right now we're passing the same callback, but it doesn't have to be the same callback. You can do different things with the button that you press. So for this example, it's basically the same menu, except this time I'm opening it with uh, when I right click and then I can select and I make a little 3D quad in there that just uh, drops a little image in the world. So I can use this for like, you know, you can imagine if this were decals, it could be like graffiti or something. But not only that, in this case, for example, I have uh, all the icons that do that, but I also have this other entry over here called Super Jump, which as a name will make you imagine when I click it, whee, I jump very, very high. I can click it again, whee, jump even higher. So you can do all sorts of things. You don't have to make the same callback for everything. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something in this. Uh, don't forget to like, like, and subscribe and all that stuff. And if you ever want to catch me on Twitch, I stream there on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you there. Adios. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.